Hey guys, what's going on? Can I get an audio check? Can you guys hear me? Um, okay, I got the mic. Everything is on. This is the new streaming setup. Derek G, what's going on? Carbon Cage is here. <laughs> ben T, all right. How is it going? Um, can you guys hear me okay? Before we get started, what do you think of the new stream setup? Uh, put this together today. Got some lights uh, over there, <laughs> and I got the Iron Man all lit up down there. Um, does it sound okay? I got the mic just off camera. Let's get this thing started today. We're going to be talking about drones. I've been going to so many meetings today, guys, and all I could think about was getting off, getting online, and talking to you guys about where do we go and fly FPV had a really good response to the poll this week. Over 400 of you responded on where you fly drones. Don't forget, poll every Saturday to be discussed on the live stream. So if you want to get in and participate in the process, be sure to vote every Saturday, and we're going to cover the topic. So the topic today is where to fly. And we asked you guys where you're all flying most frequently. And I'm also going to include some tips for you on some places maybe you haven't thought of, maybe you have. Um, um, is that what I call? This is not White Claw. This is Topo Chico, guys. Step it up. This White Claw wishes it was this. This is a refreshing Topo Chico seltzer. But let's cover today's sponsor of today's video is Mitalita Coffee. That's right, Mitalita Artisan Coffee. They make uh, coffee in K cups, in bags, or in grounds, fresh brewed. They've got you covered. My favorite flavor is Golden Pecan. Link in the description below if you'd like to get some of this coffee for yourself. But you know what's on my mind right now, guys? It ain't the coffee in my K-Cups. It's all the quadcopters in my garage. And where am I going to fly them? That's right. You know, whenever you finally get your quads together, when you get them all fixed, when you get them all built, when you get them all bought and bound up and you're ready to go fly, it's like, where can you actually fly it? And you find a couple of places and you just keep going there over and over and over and over again. And sooner or later, it starts to get a bit boring. You need to mix it up. You need to find new places. And that is the best thing to do. Now, a lot of people are saying park, and that just happens to be one of the most popular answers. Let's go ahead and share with you guys the poll results. Number one, though, unsurprisingly, was the park. I was a little bit surprised, though, on the overall results here. Here we go. Let's go down them very quickly. So in and around your house, whether you're whooping, whether you're microwing from your driveway, from your backyard, 21% of you guys voted here. Parks and fields, parks and recreation, anything and all of the above. The great outdoors, 63% of you guys are flying there. Almost two-thirds, the vast majority buildings and bandos now i expected a bit more of you guys were going to be urban building divers and not really though only four percent the smallest representative group i also expected a little bit more racers out there but only six percent of you guys said that you spend the majority of your time racing now that is where i actually spend the majority of my time uh flying fpv i'm going to talk to you a little bit about why whether you are a racer or not, you should at least try to come out to a racing event just as a chance to meet other people. A lot of freestylers come to our events. Um, you can become a better freestyler by racing, and you can become a better racer by going to freestyle. So everyone should mix it up a bit. Um, and then cruising long range, the hills are alive, diving down those mountains or sketchily long ranging in the city. 
I know none of you guys actually do that. 6% of you guys uh, there as well. Again, thanks to everyone who participated in the poll. Over 400 people uh, voted here. So let's talk a bit about all of the different selections that you have to choose from when you go to fly and how do you mix it up. You know, I've been spending quite a bit of time racing, um, quite a bit of time racing. But you know what? As I review more and more of this stuff that's up there behind me, a lot of freestyle stuff is popular that I cover. So I got to get my freestyle game up. I got to find the places around town to go freestyle. And let me tell you, the freestyler struggle is real. When you're a racer, you show up to a planned event, you fly the track all day. We'll literally sit there for six, seven hours sometimes, and I will leave that place having flown 30, 40 on a really nice day where the heats are moving smoothly. I might fly 50 packs in a day. And I'll tell you what, guys, going to try to find some nice place to freestyle when you got your GoPro strapped on, when you got your batteries charged, um, can be kind of difficult because even when you find a good spot or two, you fly a few packs, you see what you can see, you nail the power loop that you were trying to nail, and then you want to go somewhere else. Then you want to go to the next spot. And you got to repeat the process all over again. And heaven forbid you get to the spot you plan to go to. And all of a sudden there's a family of 15 having a giant picnic there. Then what do you do, guys? Then what do you do? That's the worst. MK Mo's here. Hey, Mo, how's it going? Thanks for letting me know. Uh, that you saw my uh, post on the Joshua Barwell channel last night. Uh, let me turn this off right here. So Jeff is here. He chases ducks and geese. Duck, duck, goose. Oh, my gosh. I can't get that thing to be quiet. Brandon uh, sometimes drives around for a spot too long. You know, that's what I discovered when I really started to go on a bit more freestyling lately. I discovered just how real that freestyler struggle is. It's not just like coming up to a race event where everything's planned for you, where you can fly over and over again, or like us when we show up to the night spot to race and we sit there racing pack after pack after pack after pack. Uh, it ain't like that. You got to find a fresh spot. And so many times you end up leaving in disappointment because a gate is blocked a fence is closed there's too many people there's dogs wandering around or what have you and bubba is here how's it going man i do have the protect 35 uh thanks bubba for letting me check this out i flew it at the night spot last night we're going to talk a little bit more about this and some other exciting things from iFlight coming up next um, so here are a couple of tips on places to go fly that you might not have thought of. Uh, churches are always good except Sunday or if it's a synagogue Saturday. Um, schools are generally good nights and weekends. There's nobody there unless there's been somebody that misbehaved particularly badly. There's some crazy detention going on. Other than that, they're generally empty, and a lot of times, at least in Texas, we have like these crazy awning type things in the front of our schools that you can really do some gnarly power loops off of. Just make sure if you ever go to a place like that, always pick up after yourself. Don't make yourself a nuisance. If there is people there, go somewhere else. Don't bother anyone. And uh, this is a good a time as any to say. Uh, just cover a little bit of ground rules, guys, because there's something I've been noticing lately. And actually, I was talking to Bot Grinder last night, or was it this morning? And he was saying how he had been noticing a lot of people doing some particularly sketchy stuff with the new DJI drone. And I think 
that that sketchy flying is not just a DJI drone user thing. I think that's just a new pilot thing. But please know, it doesn't matter whether you're flying uh, your first drone, you're an experienced pilot, it doesn't matter if you have a drone like the DJI PV drone with auto level features, don't fly over anything that you would not want to crash onto. You never know when something could hit your drone unexpectedly. You never know when a ghost branch is going to appear out of nowhere. You never know when your battery is just going to run out. A random component is going to fail. Um, it happens, guys. It happens. I'm telling you. It's pretty rare if you set your stuff up right, but anything could always be happening. You always have to be prepared for anything. You always have to be prepared to disarm. So don't fly over roads. Don't fly over people or pets. And a uh, pro tip, don't fly over water unless you want to try to find it like three years later in a lake like Zorro did. Take a page out of his book. But funnily enough, he just crashed his quad into a lake again. I guess he didn't learn his lesson. Come on now, Zorro. Um, Adam Saloboda says that he went and got a few packs at the local church. Nice one. NG said he sees a lot of nudes flying over freeways and crowds. They're loony. Yes, don't do that, guys. There's plenty of places to fly. Find an open field somewhere, especially if you're practicing. Whenever I'm doing a maiden flight of any quad, I always try to find somewhere with a lot of space, not too many trees, uh, and a lot of grass because, you know, you let one of these things down on grass, you're probably going to be okay. Doc Murdoch says... Ken Heron had a bat hit his drone mid-flight. Yeah, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Ken Heron, that crazy guy. Um, Adam says he's a very new pilot and have been sticking to the open space. Uh, that's the perfect way to fly, the perfect way to get the flight feel. It's all about getting that stick time in, guys. You got to get the stick time. Uh, get it on the simulator. Get it in real life. Don't go too crazy trying to do too many tricks too fast. Get the stick time. I'm telling you. Uh, Carbon Cage says, by the time you learn to fly 99%, you know better. That's right. You do know better. Uh, oh, Bull says that he put two in the pond last month. Oh, that stings, man. I'll tell you what. The first quad that I built back in 2016, 2017, was a long time ago. I spent so many hours. I watched that UAV Futures $99 build. I know a lot of us got started there. I assembled a bunch of parts from Banggood. I didn't even know there was U.S. shops. I don't know if there was at the time. Um, I assembled all my parts. You know, it took four or five weeks for them to all arrive. I shoddily soldered all the components up. I did a terrible job. It looked hideous, but it flew. That first moment when you take the first hover in the air of something that you built with your own hands, it's such an indescribable feeling of achievement. It feels like you're, you know, at one with the Wright brothers, achieving the miracle of flight, something that you have just born into existence with thine own hands and thine own TS-100, um, only for myself to get overconfident, too quick, too fast. I flew over a pond just a mile away from my house, and when that thing browned out, there was no OSD back in those years. So when I ran out of juice because I was having too much fun, and I just heard a plunk, it was gone. That was my first quad that I built. I spent days, hours, hours, hours going all around that whole area trying to find that quad that I'd never found it guys i never found it that almost put me out of the hobby altogether um i had so much fun but only about a day or two's worth before i sunk it and i had to wait another six weeks to get parts again and rebuild everything um so don't fly over anything that you don't want to land over i'm fortunate though that in my early lessons all i was out was a lost quad because i foolishly flew over water thankfully i didn't fly over people or crash onto a car or anything like that so just always safety first guys 
Uh, Greg is here. Gregory Carr, how's it going? Midrone is liking the casual poetic stream. Yes, it's got to be that Topo Chico kicking in. Uh, Zero says that he has four and still have time to build, but no time. Oh, still have to build. Yes, you got to get building, man. Uh, Midrone has drowned three quads. Put in the comments below if you've ever lost a drone. Was it to water? or some other thing, did it have a flyaway? Don't forget, if you're a new pilot here in the stream, one of the first things you do before taking off is set up your fail safe. If you ever lose signal, you want that drone to drop. Now that may sound a little counterintuitive, but the alternative is it will just float away forever into the stratosphere. You don't want that. You don't. You want it to drop, and that way you can go retrieve it as long as you weren't flying over anything that you shouldn't have been. So always set up your failsafe as a matter of course. Richard is here. He found my acrobat in the Atlantic. Wow. Richard is basically like an FPV Jacques Cousteau. Nice job on finding it in the drink. Eric Toft is here. He's in the phase where you're breaking all that stuff. Well, I'm glad to tell you, Eric, that phase will end someday. At first, you break everything. Then you get to a point where you break almost nothing. Once I finally learned to fly and stay in the air, I went so long without even breaking a prop. I was like, what are people always buy so many props? I've never even broken a prop. And then I started racing. <laughs> then everything was broken, right? Ah, Brandon is here. He flew the DJI many kilometers over uncoverable terrain, but it wasn't mine. And DJI wouldn't have held me account before it. Ah, that's the best loner DJI quad. Yes. Uh, Adam lost the tiny hawk two to a picnic table. Bubba drowned one in the river. It's in the Gulf somewhere. It's, it went out to sea. Oh, man. NG had a loss. Uh, flashing the wrong version of JESC. I had an old six and one burst into flames gloriously. I still can't remember the smell. Oh, yeah, the smell, the smell of those burnt quad components. You know, we had a, a, a lipo fire out at the night spot. I don't know if I can actually show you guys this, uh, if I can share a screen from our Discord. If I can, I will try to share it to you. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. let me try to pull this up so we were racing last night all of a sudden i'm flying and somebody starts calling out land now we used to call out fire but i told people don't call out fire when i'm flying because if i'm still in the air i'm thinking you're telling me i'm on fire my moves are on fire i'm going so good uh no say land so we all had to land somebody's quad somebody's battery was on fire t-rex's battery was on fire if you watch the race blog that dropped yesterday t-rex was the one with those glow and the dark track moves go watch that um if you haven't seen it yet we had a pretty good race vlog yesterday and all of a sudden this was at our night spot if you've seen our events where we're out there racing on an industrial park that is where this occurred all of a sudden we all had to run over i grabbed my gear i grabbed my gimbal in order to capture the carnage of this thing going up in flames it was pretty interesting and let me see if I can share it with you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's get it shared. Gregory Carr says he had a FR Sky D8 with a Tarsier and the HD cam over water. Oh, man. Yeah, that D8, uh, I would not trust that over water. Uh, not at all. Okay, can you guys see that? There we go. 
All right, so here is the carnage from the night spot right there, guys. You see that lipo fire? Look at that smoky smell, that delicious smoky flavor. And as I was getting some of the footage, uh, here you can see another guy's recording me. And all of a sudden, it just ignites. And I'm like, whoa, I'm over there with the DJI Ronin gimbal getting some close-up of that. And it almost burned my beard off. So always uh, be cautious whenever you're flying FPV, guys. Always. Uh, let's catch up on some of these comments. Bull says no quads left behind. Yeah, you know, on my one quad that I did lose, I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I never could find it. Ah, it was terrible. Double A says a red tail hawk took my first drone and dropped it in the woods about a mile away. A neighbor found it two years later. Wow, that is incredible. You know, I have had some hawks and some buzzards like come at me, but never any actually try to attack one of my quads. That has got to be a scary experience. It's scary enough as it is when you crash. I can't imagine actually being attacked by a hawk. That's wild, man. Um, <laughs> Jeff fries those Emacs all in ones. Doc. Murdoch lost the Stingy V2 at mid-range due to a VTX failure a quarter mile out. Oh, man. Yeah, that stings. Um, let's see who else is in the chat. This is the kind of live streams that are nice. Thanks, man. We're just having a good time talking about the best places to fly and the best places not to fly. Don't go flying near the airport. That's pretty obvious. But there's some other places that you should not go flying. Don't go flying at schools during school offers, during school hours. Don't go flying at businesses during business hours. You know, it's one thing going to fly in a parking lot. If no one's around, you're not going to be bothering anybody. If somebody does come and ask you to leave, just go somewhere else. You know, don't bother anybody with the sound of your loud drone noises. Um, let's see. Let's catch up on some more of these comments. Ah. Uh, so as you're, as we've learned, way majority of you guys, two thirds are flying in parks and flying in fields, um, basically over grass, which is where I actually like to fly. If I'm freestyling, I like to race in those environments. Either whenever you do crash, which you probably will, it's at least going to be cushioned by that soft pillowy grass. Now, what are the quads that you guys are finding? Um, to fly. Well, if we go to the poll from the previous week, we know that the vast majority of everyone is flying five inch. So now through the data that we're collecting on the live stream polls, we know that the majority of the hobby are flying in fields and parks around trees with five inch. But don't forget, guys, you can have quite a bit of fun from your driveway. That was the next highest was in and around your house. And something like this toothpick 1S um, with the FPV cycle minty green motors. Ding! That's how minty these things are. Um, with the ultra hard to find the Z's all in one. Uh, this is about as hard to get your hands on as a PlayStation 5. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. I actually did not buy it through the store because those were sold out in seconds. I don't know if we have scalpers, you know, scalping all the FPV cycle goods or what, uh, but I was able to get this as a bind and fly. Someone was selling it, and so I got everything, and then I didn't even have to build it, so that was pretty nice. This thing is a really good ripper. There's going to be a full review up on this thing very soon. Uh, most police stations and military facilities are restricted air pay airspace yeah uh <laughs> yes i would not recommend don't co fly next to the police station i mean uh yeah that seemed definitely like a bad idea jeff says a cop stopped to watch me fly i freaked till he gave me the thumbs up yeah you know what we regularly have uh cops coming by our races uh, especially out at battleground if you've ever seen my channel the races we have on that grassy area aka ghost branch town 
there's tons of ghost branches everywhere. They'll come out and chill with us. Um, we always give them ride-alongs. Uh, we always make sure, again, the, the golden rules of flying FPV anywhere, of being a good ambassador of FPV, is to always pick up after yourself, never leave a mess, never make too much noise, never bother anybody. And so we always do that. So the cops are quite uh, friendly with us. They're really cool. Um, that same field that we use, you know, there's a guy that goes out and hits golf balls all day in that field. There's people that come out and, and let their dogs run around. So we all share the field and, uh, you know, we give each other space and it's really awesome. So um, that you can always um, hopefully get along with people that share the field as long as you treat it with respect. They will treat you with respect. Hopefully, unless there's some Karens out there. But, you know, don't sit there and argue with the Karen. Just go somewhere else. It ain't worth it, man. Double A says everything was okay with his thing, except the motors were rusted up. Oof. Uh, Brandon says, when I went to want to freestyle the Tadpole 3 inch, I go to the 400 meter long range field. Oh, nice. Rip it there. That's a pretty good one. Uh, Eric says that he let one of the local cops watch through a spare set of goggles. People love to watch. That's right. That's why every time I go fly anywhere, in my case, I always keep a couple of field monitors with me so that I can hand them off to people. One time uh, we were having a race. We had a family come out. It looked like some grandparents, some parents, and then two or three grandkids. And they all just came and were kind of hanging off to the side. I went over there and just kind of said hello, um, answered any questions that they had. Any They seemed interested. Uh, one of the teenagers that was one of the grandkids was like, oh, man, he's got the DJI system because he saw I was racing with the DJI goggles. So I went. I got them a couple of analog field monitors I had because uh, most of the other people were racing on analog and I just let them have it for the next, you know, however long they wanted to stay there, 20, 30 minutes so they could watch the races and really get an immersive experience, know what FPV is all about. So always keep one of those field monitors in case you ever get that opportunity to share uh, what it's like, what it looks like, what it's all about. Get somebody's heart pumping with FPV like that. Uh, let's see. NG says newbie drone has some one S packs in stock. If anybody's looking, yeah, um, they do have really good, uh, nitro nectar packs. I do like those. Uh, Jeff has said he's getting the armor 10 tadpole soon. Yes, there is the tadpole HD. If you are in that HD flavor, uh, want to do a DJI build or the original channel, uh, original tadpole uh, especially the three inch variety is such a, oh, you can get a really nice light three inch um, analog setup too. And if you put the right motors on it, 1204 or larger, you can easily carry that new Insta 360 go uh, very comfortably. <clears throat> can we get a quick, oh, uh, Brandon is asking for a wristwatch check. Well, if you don't know, one of my other hobbies is watches. I used to have a Facebook group. I guess it's probably still there. It's got about 2,500 people in it called the Spring Bar. This is actually the Hamilton Khaki King on a Bond NATO strap. Uh, this is Hamilton's field watch uh, choice. It has a lovely 20 millimeter lug width along with these handsome um, date complication. It has the day and date at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, this is also the watch that House wears uh, at least some of those seasons of, of that. I really had been wanting a field watch for a long time. So uh, the missus gifted this to me uh, several years ago. And it's a really nice casual watch. I usually keep it on a NATO strap. I believe it came on a leather strap. But I usually wear the leather on my Speedy Pro. Um, and just use this for if it's hot. If it's too hot for leather, I like to go with the NATO strap like this. So this is a great walk around watch. Back to the FPV stuff. Uh, Jeff dropped the throttle in half and knew the cop was cool. That, uh, yeah, yeah, always uh, be nice and cool uh, with the cops. So we're going to do a little bit more in about 
15 more minutes, we'll switch to just totally Q&A format. So if you have any questions about FPV or life in general, if you need some advice, Uncle John will give it to you. So start thinking of those questions to ask. Now let's talk about some other things that are coming up on the channel. Had some really cool um, Cinewhoop options that are coming on the channel. This is iFlight's new little micro two-inch Cinewhoop. And I have reviewed several of these. Um, I actually have this little thing too that's coming up very soon. My goodness, these things are just piling up. Um, I actually have this one already shot, I think. This one's already shot. I need to do some editing, but I can't edit because I'm too busy talking to you guys. No, I'm just kidding. This is really, really good. I believe it's called the C85. And this is the first um, micro Cinewhoop. I will say micro because it's only two inch. It weighs less than 100 grams dry. And uh, it actually could carry that Insta360 Go 2 perfectly. Uh, it really did an amazing job at flying this around the house. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up very, very soon. Speaking of Cinewhoops, though, sometimes the Insta360 series just isn't going to cut it. Sometimes you need something with a little bit more power, something with a little bit more prop size. And iFlight has been really cooking up some crazy stuff. iFlight has this, the ProTech 35. This is not the amateur tech, it's the ProTech. So stay tuned for that. Um, this carries the weight of this GoPro Hero 9 as if it were nothing. It is rather loud, though, so stay tuned for this. Uh, I've been really wanting to get my hands on this, so thanks to Bubba for uh, letting me check his out. Dubway says, I'm excited to hear about the NASA experience. Yes, full NASA employment review story reveal at 50,000 subscribers, so be sure and make sure that you are subscribed. You know what else I'm really excited to tell you guys about that's coming on the channel very soon? The Houston crew, myself included, are going to be test users for ZTAG. That's right, ZTAG, the drone laser tag system where you strap this unit onto your drone. You can have laser tag dog fights with your quads, meet up with your buddies. Now you don't just have to have the option of freestyle or race. You can also ZTAG, so stay tuned for that. I just distributed um, the test units out to the testers of our Houston crew, and they're going to be um, installing it. We're going to be making some prints for a couple of the frames that we fly to be able to attach this ZTAG laser tag system to. i um, pretty excited to see how that goes, um, so stay tuned for that. ZTAG is be, going to be coming up very soon. Jeff, yes, this is 4S. Um, this is a small 1050 uh, milliamp 4S, but I also flew it with a 1500 4S and it handled it just fine. So 1500 if you want a little bit more flight time. I actually took this on the track at the night spot, so stay tuned for that. I got some chase footage with my buddy Sam, uh, so I haven't checked it out yet because I was just doing that late last night, but I'll... Be, that'll be coming up in the review of this thing very soon. Uh, Jeff, that is for, yes, for us. The Protex getting a lot of praise. I want to see Black Bog log of it personally. Yeah, you know, it's it's going to be a tough one. Uh, so I still have the Cinesplore right behind me right there. So I'm going to, and then um, Quad Standard Labs is gonna be sending me one of their custom builds of a Shindrone Squirt 6S version. So we're gonna have a Cinewhoop shootout between uh, this two inch, the ProTech 35, the FPV Cycle Cinesplore, and a custom built Shindrone Squirt. And we're gonna see which one of these is the best uh, out there. So stay tuned for that. Make sure that you are ready to see which of these cine whoops or should you just get them all. Um, Brandon says, wasn't there another tag thing that Rotor Riot featured? Yeah, there's been a couple of folks to try it. I really like this option so far. I wired one up 
um, just to see. I like that the game starts immediately as you plug it in. Um, I like that this option just receives power from a balance lead, so you don't actually have to solder anything to a flight controller. The system has a series of lights on it that you put in your camera's view so that you can keep track and keep score that way. So that is pretty, pretty cool. What are some other secret places that you guys like to fly? Um, and what is the craziest or coolest place that you have ever gotten to fly? I'll tell you a couple of quick stories about the two coolest places I've been able to fly. One of them was an indoor soccer stadium. That's right. Several years ago, there's a video on my channel of the uh, racing event that we call Drone Wars. Uh, we held an indoor soccer stadium racing event. Somebody was able to do the talking and get us in the door at this place. Um, so we paid an entry fee and we all got to race on the um, actual field. Now that was turned out to be a multi-pathing nightmare because the building was essentially like one of those aluminum, uh, you know, shed warehouse type things. So the <laughs> the multi-pathing in there was terrible. The video feed for everyone, even people that had like clear view ground stations, were all struggling severely. But that was really really cool. In fact, I actually took. Uh, my wife along with me at that time. That was one of the few events she got to come see some of the young racing prodigies that we have in our community. And it was kind of fun just to check it out and see some of the people I'm always talking about. All the same people that you guys get to see in the race vlogs of the Houston crew. If you haven't checked out those race vlogs, go check them out. There's a new one that just dropped yesterday about Freedom Spec, the latest flavor of spec racing that is hitting the racing scene. And if you don't know what that is, that is a spec where you buy a certain set of motors, the heads up motors that happen to be the most popular motors on the market now. And you build up a light quad. It's got to be around 260 grams or less. And then you fly it on a 3S battery, right? So it, it gives everyone the opportunity to kind of still see everybody. You can fly at that lower speed. You'll break less, but you still have premium motors, so they're reusable on any other size. Um, in previous years, the spec racing formula was to fly really old components, but that was kind of lame because you'd end up building a quad that you couldn't use for anything else. The Freedom Spec, you do have to get the heads-up motors. You do have to get the heads-up props, I believe, but the rest of the spec is just a weight limit. So you have a quad that you can race for Freedom Spec, but you can totally race it or you can take all the components off. Um, you could race it on 6S no problem because those are the latest components. Or you could take it all off and build a totally gnarly freestyle quad with it. Uh, so I do like that part of it. I'm hoping to get my hands on some of those motors uh, pretty soon. Do you do much long range, Jeff asks? No, I really don't. Um, just because I had such a terrible experience losing my first quad like I was talking about earlier, I'm just always paranoid to fly any farther than I can see it. And I don't get that much exercise, so I don't ever want to have to do a walk of shame longer than I'm comfortable with actually going for a walk for. So I'm not trying to walk uh, you know, two miles to go retrieve a quad and two miles back. That's just too much. So the most I ever really fly is maybe two, 300 yards, you know, comfortably, comfortable range. You know, I do test all the antennas, but that's just how I do it. RC Ritter is here. Uh, Jeff flies in the trails in the woods on an island. Whoa, what island is that? You know, I've always wanted to buy a private island off the coast of <laughs> Costa Rica and maybe do some crazy science there. Uh, that's one thing I've always wanted to do. That would be a sweet place to do FPV, like sort of a FPV Jurassic Park island. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you guys would all probably want to come along to that. Brandon says, my most epic spot is a long range deep in a ravine in a canyon back up behind my town. I have to hike up to this point on a cliff to get the range. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. What state is that in? 
I mean, that sounds like a, I don't know why, but that just reminds me of the movie Tremors with Kevin Bacon. Uh, that was such a classic movie. You remember how Reba McIntyre was in that movie randomly? She was married to that gun-toting guy. They were, like, shooting the Tremors monster. Uh, what a classic. Smalls is here. He got lost flying at the beach. The scariest FPV moment I've ever had. Yeah, the beach is sketchy. Uh, the ocean is full of undiscovered mysteries and dangers uh some discovered and undiscovered known or unknown to man and so that's why i have no desire to fly fpv at any beach anywhere if i'm on a beach i want to be relaxing on a little chair with a little hat and a nice cold refreshing drink that's what i like to do at a beach not go flying uh, but I do appreciate seeing the beautiful footage that some of you guys collect. So if you do have that beach footage, post it below in the link so we can all watch it. Uh, Brandon says, I need to get that Recon 5-inch and uh, they on your recommendation and be able to send that thing again. Oh, and Northern Cali, no, Cal. Uh, yes, the Recon, it's uh, it's up here somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. Uh, I mean, it's a little out of focus, but... <laughs> Yeah, sand is definitely bad for boaters, but you know, some people just want to get that, want to get those gnarly waves, those tasty waves, guys. That's what people like to do, fly on the beach. Uh, you know, I like to do other things on the beach, perhaps. So, what other FPB questions do you guys have? What are you guys flying these days? And I think maybe the next poll that we might have, uh, I'm trying to formulate these polls ahead of time. I want to create a narrative. We, I want to create a stream of data going week by week so that we can really discover more about the community. We can really learn together and optimize our time and experience. So now we know most people fly five inch. Most people fly in parks. I'm curious to know next, I think, and this may be the next poll, is how long do people fly? Now, it's really not um, quantifiable in time, so I think I'm going to do more like how many packs do you fly in a session? Do you fly three packs? Do you fly 10 packs? Do you fly 50 packs? Do you bring some method of charging? Um, I'm a little spoiled now because in the race community, we have probably have five or six people that own generators now. So anytime we go out for an event, we can just charge. So we can fly over and over and over and over. It's basically like our own little piece of FPV heaven. It's like the FPV sandlot. Uh, when you go to one of these race fun flies. And we're doing more fun flies these days, guys. Um, competitive racing, where you actually get a rank and everything, is nice. But we prefer fun fly style. Why? Because you get more packs that way. We just keep rotating the rounds over and over and over and over. And we kind of keep score. Like uh, We'll usually have a timing system so you can at least benchmark yourself against your buddies to see who's putting in the fastest laps. But we do it in more of an informal capacity so that we can maximize the flight time. Flight time. B Moore says he likes that beach footage. Uh, yeah, it, it does definitely look... Um, Smalls has a video out there with some nice beach footage called Life's a Beach. True, true. Uh, Matt Reyes, I don't know if you're talking to me, but I'm down in Texas. Uh, you know, now a lot of my guys uh, that I fly with on the race vlogs, they're all going to be heading up to Dallas this weekend for the Mayhem team race, the big Mayhem team race. I wish I was going, but... Uh, I mean, I just can't commit a whole weekend of travel for that kind of thing. Plus, I wasn't invited on any of the teams. Uh, but that's okay. These guys are fast. You know how fast they are? Uh, my two buddies that were in the race vlog this past week, Yvonne and Neil, they're currently ranked 10th and 19th on the global worldwide leaderboards. They're teaming up with Vanover and several other really fast Texas pilots uh, for the Don't Mess With Texas team participating. So we're going to all cheer them on. King James and Hungry Shark that were formerly from our Houston crew, 
Uh, they moved up to Northern Texas. They're coming down to participate on that team. So that's going to be some really awesome uh, team racing. We'll see if they can defeat Heart of America and Velocidrome. I believe those are the two teams to beat. Those are some really, really fast guys. Yvonne says they're like robots, uh, which to us, he's kind of a robot. Uh, let's see. Marcella says he tries to do four to six packs if he can. I fly, uh, Jeff flies right by the house, six packs at a time and then go get more. Uh, yeah, you know, packs are pretty pricey these days, especially if you're on success. You know, you can buy a budget pack for 20 bucks and it does pretty well. But if you want to start competing, or you want to carry a GoPro and get the best flat flight time, you're easily paying $35 to $40 a pack. You know, the best pack on the market right now, I think, is the Tatsu V4, although they're, it's really like almost debatable on if that pack actually exists. Does the Tatsu V4 actually exist? Because you can't actually buy one, but if you could buy one, it's probably the best pack on the market, but it's $40. So, you know, I try to always have 10 to 12 packs at a time that I can go fly. Uh, I've let my pack, uh, my pack reservoir kind of get depleted, though, because I'm spoiled by the ability to field charge because of all the generators that we have in town. So uh, I do have quite a few packs of other sizes, but 6S 5-inch packs, which are your 1300s, your 1400s. Um, I only have like probably four really good packs and then like maybe six decent packs that I could still practice a freestyle with and then maybe two or three like really shitty ones that are about to get thrown out. Matt is in Victoria. He recently purchased the DJI PV and is looking to get another drone to practice with. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if you're ever in the Houston area, definitely come fly with us. Um, you can always... Uh, Find us on the Houston Discord or, or any of the Houston FPV Facebook groups. Um, the guys in Houston, we may – I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know if there's any other city that flies more. Uh, as far as, like, racing events or meetups, uh, between, like, regular fun flies, meetups, racing events, these guys get together and fly probably 12 to 15 times a month. I mean, a lot. Uh, I'm lucky if I can get out there and fly, maybe I'll race three times a month and then go burn some packs, you know, on a lunch break, maybe another three or four times a month. Uh, but some of these guys are flying 10 to 15 times a month. And when I say fly, these guys go fly for like six, seven, eight hours a day. Uh, so they're putting in some serious packs. That's why we do have two of the top 20 uh, folks in town. The entire town has been leveling up for a while but that's how you get good guys, the stick time. That's why I can't catch up to them because I just can't get the equivalent stick time. Uh, NG, this is why I whoop. Yes, whoop packs are the best value for your money. You can get like 30, you know, or 10 whoop packs for like 30, 40 bucks. It's crazy. Uh, Midrone says he goes and he flies eight to 12 packs. That's right. And so that really kind of goes in, um, that really kind of goes into, you know, what size do you fly? Because a battery for this two inch is going to be cheaper than a battery for this three and a half inch, which is going to be cheaper than a battery for any of those five inch behind me. Uh, and all those are going to be cheaper or more expensive than a battery for this 1S toothpick. Uh, which is still going to be more expensive than a battery for a Whoop. So, you know, if you want to get the most mileage, the Whoop packs, though, do, do, team, do die faster, even though they are the cheapest. So really the best bang for the buck might be like a, two, like a 2S toothpick, like a Diatone Cube or something like that. Okay, let's go about 10 minutes more. Who's got the questions? What do you guys want to know? What do you guys want to know? Um, what do you you know? What else can we talk about? FPV, like what's coming out lately? What are the trends? You know, Freedom Spec is really um, causing a rejuvenation in uh, the popularity of lightweight quads, and I'm really excited about that. My buddy Matt built up a five-inch racer uh, using the open racer frame. 
Um, you could see a little bit of that frame in yesterday's race blog. Go check that out. I'm going to have a full review of the Open Racer very soon. Here is the HD pod of the Open Racer that I printed on my Prusa uh, for the review. So I'm going to be using this for the review. Um, this is for the Open Racer. Um, Matt built up a frame with the analog version of this pod with the heads up 2207 motors with strap props antenna everything at 246 grams 246 grams for a freedom spec racing quad that you could still easily go fly on a regular race course for reals that's crazy 246 grams i mean i've been racing dji for well over a year now exclusively and 246 grams though that's making me want to build another analog race quad guys uh i might have to get on on this i got me a couple of freedom spec packs they were cheap 20 bucks a pop and those are the expensive tattoo version they are 2300 3s uh for that freedom spec <laughs> Let's check up on these comments. Uh, JT says 12 packs on a two and a half inch and three inch quad. That's a good number. I really like the 12 pack number. That's kind of what I would like to, that's kind of what I used to always try to aim to have about 12 packs. Uh, it's a good number. You could spend an hour, a couple hours, depending on, you know, how hard you're ripping it. Uh, I like that JT. Uh, Jeff says, I bet Beast and X-Class are crazy money. Yeah, you know, the batteries for those things are crazy money because a lot of times they'd be running like a pair of like 6,000 milliamp uh, 6S packs to make them 12S. And each of those uh, packs is like, you know, $150, $200. So just for like one flight, you know, you're, you're, you're flying, you know, $300 in batteries, you know, maybe $400. That's crazy. And, and like when those X-Class things crash, I mean, it ain't like a five inch. That thing's just going to be obliterated. You know, there's chunks of things flying everywhere. It's crazy. Eric says he likes the, the Pyro Baron Infinity uh, Sixes. Yeah, I have a couple of those uh, 1100 Infinity packs. I think I might have a 1300. It's a pretty good pack. I like those too. Marcella says that's why I three inch, half a dozen two inch or 2S packs and a few 3S, and you can fly them all in a sitting. Yeah, you know, that is the best bang for the buck. And I do like that that sort of toothpick-ish size is also very quiet. doesn't bother people. It's very lightweight. You can easily, with a battery, if you're on analog, you know, be really close to about 100 grams all up. So, I mean, that's not enough to really do any kind of damage. So it's, it's a really nice freeing size. Uh, we've been trying to get the weight on some of these HD ones. The Vista unit does add a little bit of weight, so it's harder to get that that weight down. But I have I have been enjoying the uh, Tadpole three inch HD. It's not quite that light, uh, but it is probably around 160 grams, maybe with the battery ish, uh, which is still pretty dang light, and it's super fun to fly. Danny R says I'm new to flying. I'm hitting five S packs uh five packs of 4s and i want to switch to 6s yeah you know if you only have 4s uh if you only have a couple of 4s packs uh it probably is worth it to go ahead and switch uh you're not gonna get super you know you can still get good flight time on 4s if you're not flying fast once you start flying fast once your 4s packs can no longer take you two to three minutes that's when it's about time to switch. But if you can still fly a 4S pack for five, six, seven minutes, you know, you're probably all right. But if you're going to have to buy anyway, you might as well go ahead and buy 6S packs. Um, what's the average 4S for a 4-inch? Uh, so for 4-inch, um, you're going to want to run a 650 or an 850 most times. My favorite pack, though, for 4-inch is this right here. The Tattoo 1050 milliamp 4S. Uh, this is a cheap pack. It's about 18 to 20 bucks. It only weighs about 125 grams. So it is a little bit heavier than your 650 and 850. But if you're running a really healthy size 4 inch, 
uh, it's going to be able to carry this extra 20 grams or so, and you're going to get a lot better flight times. And also because the C rating on this tattoo is actually pretty good, you're going to get real juice. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm doing another four inch build right now. I keep showing it and I haven't made any progress, so I apologize on that. But this one hanging right here, let me grab it. This one hanging out right here um, is the Apex 4-inch. The Apex 4-inch, I'm going to be building this up. Uh, I've already started wiring the stack up. I'm probably going to put the motors on tomorrow. So hopefully by the weekend, I'll be able to get some packs on this, review on this coming up very soon. And this Apex 4-inch, I have high hopes. The arms are quite thick. It is really sturdy. So I'm going to put the largest motor I've ever put on a 4-inch on this thing. And we're going to send this freaking thing as hard as I can. I'm going to do some full-size freestyle, if you know what I mean. So stay tuned for that. Um, Danny just picked up the QAVS Sensei 5-inch. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good one. Uh, oh, I got to catch up on some of these comments. Oh, man, you guys are commenting like crazy. It looks like a blue little headless piggy. <laughs> Yarbs, that's hilarious. Princess FPB Drone says that, hey, first time seeing you live. Hey, Prince, thanks for coming by. Be More Visuals says, what's all the obsession with weight? Like in Pennsylvania, I don't think the cops even know the difference between a drone and a toaster. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, weight is a thing that we really got stuck on in years past in racing. Like when the first floss frame came out, um, was a was close to the time I was, I was starting to race. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want the weight down. Like, it makes sense, right? Weight down, speed up. Weight down, speed up, you know? So, like, I was like, yeah, I was a big-time weight watcher. Like, I mean, I was, like, leaving off connectors because I wanted to save, like, 0. 0.0002 2 grams, you know? But, it, you know, in the end, it really doesn't make any sense. Um, just build it tough. And like this thing, um, Lamone, who is designing this open racer canopy, there is a lot of material here. So this thing is super protective. Um, that's why I like to fly his designs for my DJI racing drones, because there's no way, even a full strength uh, speed gate hit, you're going to have a little chance of breaking that DJI camera or air unit or a Vista rather in there. So, yeah, I mean, be more visuals. You're pretty much right. Um, Atex is 4S for life. Uh, <laughs> Jeff says, I consider 1S disposable. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a good way to see it. Um, Sean Stokes says, any idea when the Tadpole HD release uh, will release? Yes. Um, so I talked to Armitan uh, at the end of last week. They said that they've sent it off to production. They were happy with the feedback that they saw on my video. So thanks all you guys for watching, leaving your comments. Um, we had made several changes prior to that. So they've sent it off to manufacturing. It should be available in the next, uh, they said three to four weeks. That was about you know five or six days ago. So probably two and a half to three and a half weeks. And you'll be able to get your hands on that Tadpole HD. So stay tuned. Uh, for that one, let's see. What analog cameras do people like me drone ask? Uh, if you're talking about racing, people like the Predator and the Run Cam Racer 3 are probably the two most popular. If you're talking about uh, freestyle, a lot of people are on like the Toothless right now. The Cat is very, very good. And the T-Rex is also supposed to be a superb image. So any of those, if you are on analog. I also like the Phoenix varieties are very good as well. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. NG says those are perfect for wings. The 1050, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, RC Ritter says he just got some GMB 4S 1100. I hope to use those with the Recon 5. Yeah, I do really want to get some of those GMB 1100 as well. I'm probably going to order next time I get some from one of the shops that has it. 
Uh, so that pretty much covers most of what we wanted to talk about today. So as you're out there flying, guys, always be aware of your surrounding. Don't fly too close to anybody. Be a good ambassador of FPV. Make sure and keep those analog field monitors with you guys. Um, Carbon Glass Man says that the T-Rex is a fantastic image. The Cat 3 is good in daylight and awesome at night. Yeah, I have the Cat um, in the FR7 that I built, and it's, you know, it's pretty good. It's not as good as DJI, which I'm more used to flying, but, you know, um, in a pinch. I do like how big that lens is. Speaking of lenses, for the life of me, I could not find the lens cap for the, the normal lens that I shoot. Uh, my channel with but for the live stream I decided to bust out this Helios lens this is an old Russian Zeiss copy um, and it's a really awesome lens you can see the bokeh on here look at the creamy bokeh the, that nice uh, creamy depth of field behind me is all nice um, yeah so I decided to use that lens but I could not find the lens cap for this thing but I found a uh, print on thingiverse and check this thing out dude like the little tabs actually work can you see that can you see that like so it actually is a functioning lids cap that you print out in one piece and it really works uh that's such a really cool thing i can't believe the things that you can have um that you can do with a 3d printer i was about to spend like 15 bucks on a replacement lens cap for this Zeiss lens that I normally shoot with. And I was able to print one out for about 18 cents uh, in about an hour. That's crazy. Uh, Marcellus picked up a toothless Nano Starlight from Race Day Quads. Yeah, the Cat 3 looks awesome. It does, it does. Um, Yarb says that lens make the wall drones appear way further than they are. It's dope. Yeah, yeah, I do like this Helios lens. You know, I bought it several years ago, and I hadn't really found a use for it. And I was like, ooh, maybe the live stream will give me that cool vintagey, uh, you know, really bring the background out. So, yes, Eric, thank you for the $5 super chat. Just to thanks for making our GP race with our first DJI pilot a success hey man that's good to hear i'm glad uh we can start integrating more of the dji at these races uh, from what i understand several of the top brass over at multi gp um have those dji goggles in hands they're evaluating different um options to try to integrate that more at the races many of the chapters though across the country are allowing them at most of their races and fun flies i know we always do last night at the race uh at the night spot racing it was only me and one other guy on dji and nobody's hating on us you know um uh, sometimes we have five or six dji pilots last night we only had two and that was okay i always bring an analog quad just in case uh, anybody really doesn't want us to fly, but it's never happened. Everyone's always welcome, guys. We don't care if you come out there. We'll let you fly a tiny whoop on the track. We'll let you fly an RC car and just drive it on the track. You might have a little trouble getting into those dive gates, but, you know, hey, um, you know, it's all welcome. That's why you should always try to change the different way that you fly if you always freestyle in a park um go to a parking lot if you always freestyle go to a race if you always race go meet up with the local crew at the bando switch it up that's how you keep learning that's how you keep your muscle memory fresh you have to challenge yourself sometimes guys you got to keep it exciting you have to expand your horizons if you're building only race quads <laughs> Sorry, I just got a text. If you're building only race quads, build yourself a freestyle quad. If you haven't tried any of these Cine whoops, um, definitely try them because sometimes when I'm following somebody, when I reviewed the Cine Explorer and I was flying and chasing my buddy Yvonne on a four-wheeler, I just didn't really want to get too close to him with five-inch props. So the fact that I could do that with a GoPro Hero 9, because there are several Cinewhoop options that can carry a full-size GoPro now, 
the fact that I could get that close to him and have to and not have to worry about bumping into him because if I did, he would be protected. The drone would be protected. Uh, there's just so much to really discover and explore. So I do hear some people sometimes saying lately, oh, I don't want to fly anymore. I'm getting bored with it. I'm ready to move on. Just mix it up. Pick up a micro. Go fly in a park. Fly from your driveway. You know how satisfying it is when you don't have the time, when you've been working all day, when you're about to lose sunset, when you only got 40 minutes till the sun goes down and you don't have enough time to drive 20 minutes away to the spot. Just pull out your chair, set it in the driveway, and fly your little two-inch toothpick around from there. Do some power loops right in front of your house. You don't got to go bother anybody. You can do a full-size rip and never leave the boundaries of your own front yard with one of these things. So that's what it's all about. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you're looking for a new brand of coffee, check out Midalina Coffee. Link in the description below. Sponsor of today's video. Thank you guys for that. And... <laughs> Thanks for coming to the Johnny Five Show, the show where John is always right. And if you agree with him, you could be right too. We'll see you next time, guys. Don't forget to vote in the poll on Saturday, and then we will discuss the poll results on the stream Tuesdays at 7.30 Central Standard Time. Be sure and subscribe so that we can get to those 50,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you guys soon. Later.